Jason and I met with, with through, through a Matthew Ferry, um, and we've had Matthew Ferry on this call too, a lot of you know him. Um, through a Matthew Ferry mastermind, we connected, we were in kind of private mastermind groups from there, and we've just kind of stayed in touch over the years. And when I saw that she was opening up her um, own coaching company and kind of going on the consulting side of things too, um, I thought that was super exciting. And I know that she comes from that, um, I hope you're still the same way, where you come from that calm kind of sense of uh, the way that, you know, DeVoe and I are programmed kind of a sim very similar way where it's like, no, it's not an emergency. No, it's not this or what's causing you not to get into action, that sort of thing. So she put together a presentation for us, which as always, we'll, we'll kind of interact with and stuff. Um, and, and yeah, if, if you could give a little bit about, you know, your background, Melissa, I know you were with Five Doors uh, for a little bit. I know you were your Mike Ferry agent too. Like I give them a little bit about you and, uh, and, and let's roll. We'll go into it. Sure. And uh, just so you know, I do have slides. I'll share my screen in a few minutes. Um, I probably have too much content. We'll get through as much as we can. <laughs> Feel free to uh, ask questions, use the chat box. Um, I want to make sure I address everything. We'll also leave some time at the very end just to kind of dig deeper. I love that you had Matthew on this because you've already kind of been exposed to a different way of thinking. I want to take that one step further. Um, but yeah, quick background. So my name is Melissa Machat. I am from the Los Angeles area. I graduated from the University of Southern California with a degree in theater. Uh, I lived in, or I've moved to Las Vegas almost 12 years ago. This year will be 12 years. And I got into real estate 11 years ago. Uh, and yes, I have studied with Mike Ferry for six years. I was in Matthew Ferry's mastermind. Uh, was with Five Doors. So from 2017 to 2019, I partnered my team with a KW expansion team. I was the regional director for Nevada. Really, all you need to know from that is I learned how to recruit. I learned about leadership. I learned about bringing agents on my team. They say they have these goals of making 100 grand, and then they don't show up and don't do anything. Uh, I, I learned so much about the kind of recruiting leadership, what it really means to run a team. Uh, during that time, I brought over 50 agents onto my own personal team. It was a revolving door. We averaged about 12 to 15 agents at a time. And just learning why that wasn't working, what was going on. So um, I decided to, part, decided to part ways last year, go back on my own. And what was exciting about last year is it was a huge transition, really finding myself. Uh, I'll go into my personal development journey in a moment. Uh, but we were at my team. So I run a team, the Mishat Group, and we were number 79. Last year, out of 16,000 Las Vegas agents, which is so exciting because I've been removing myself from production more and more. And so the fact that last year in a transition, shutting down my team, starting all over, thinking I didn't know what I was doing, uh, feeling like a failure, somehow woke up and was like, oh, we did all of our business in three months. Okay, that's kind of cool, which by the way, I know this is a funky year. We're kind of, you know, it's mid-April now. We're in real estate. Who said you can't hit your goals in three, four, five months? It's not like we even it out in 12 months anyway. Like, let's be honest, right? That'd be cool if we did, but that's very rare that someone is like consistent every single month. If you are, props to you. Um, so the past six years, yes, met Brett, uh, part of the Matthew Ferry Mastermind. And um, I've also studied with Darren Hardy. Not sure if you're familiar with him. He has a really cool resource, the Darren Daily. It's free. Uh, he wrote The Compound Effect, was the former uh, publisher of Success Magazine. I've been through all of his programs. Um, and I feel like I've just been on this search for six years to, like, fix something. Like, I started to see success, but I felt like I was still failing. I wasn't doing enough. I'm, I'm not motivated enough. I, I need to do more, but, like, I'm not doing it. So what must be wrong with me? So you're going to hear me talk. I'm very vulnerable. I'm an open book. I will tell you that internally, I felt like I was just broken or something was wrong. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. Like I know, I'm, especially right now, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not doing it. Or, and I think that's kind of what attracted us to Matthew in the first place is because he kind of had, I call him my spiritual guru, right? Like he, he kind of opened my mind to this totally different world and way of thinking. Um, and I don't know how many of you have been to seminars or events where you like walk on fire or you break through a board and you're so pumped up. Yes. And you're like, I can do anything. And I just proved I can do anything. 
And then you get back to the office or wherever your real world's on Monday and you're like, I still don't want to pick up the phone or like, I just broke through a board. I just did all this stuff. I know I'm mentally capable, but like, I'm still not doing it. Like what the hell is wrong with me? So does anyone relate to that? Where it's just like, you're constantly like, yes. Like, like, <laughs> like who snaps 10 boards a day? Yeah. <laughs> but do you still do what you're supposed to do? Or are you still resisting yeah. something? No, I totally get it. I it's did UPW four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's funny that you bring it up too, because it's like that now is a special time too, where you're like, you know what? I know what I need to be doing, but I'm like, well, maybe I'll watch TV, you know? Yeah. So, so here's the cool side of it. This, this was six years of honestly, like thought something was I already said it, thought, thought something was wrong with me. Couldn't understand why I'm trying to fix it. And when all these different coaching programs, I literally was just on this broken record of like, okay, now I'm really self-aware, but like, I still can't change it. Um, and so it was very interesting. I had my transformation. It's actually when I went to a program or again, another event, everyone knew me as the person who goes to everything. Uh, and I went to NLP. It's neuro linguistic programming, which is also what Mary, uh, Matthew is, uh, I guess, certified in or studied, right? He teaches a lot of it. So I went to this the end of September and it was kind of the first time I went to something that they gave me tools to do something about it. And I just kind of had this aha and light bulb went off that if that's the effect it had on me and I know other people, especially real estate agents feel this way because I hear it every day, should be more disciplined, need more accountability, need more whatever, right? More punishment, like got to keep grinding it out, push harder, double, oh, it's a shift now, double down, right? Uh, and so NLP was the first time I actually walked away with tools that I felt like I took back control of my mind, took back control of my life. I did start my own coaching business in November and it's been literally life-changing. So I'm going to go through with you guys and I'm really excited about it. I'm going to go through with you guys kind of some takeaways, some tips, what you can do to take back control of your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, and how to actually get into action without accountability and pressure and force. Um, so that sound good? My permission? I see it. I get it. I'm with you. I'm glad this resonates, right? I'm hope I'm, I hope I'm not the only one. I thought I was the only one. You're not alone. <laughs> so if it's cool, I'm going to share my screen. And like I said, please use the chat box. If you want to stop me, ask questions, feel free. So let's do this really fast. Okay. Everyone can see? We're good? Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. So I've been playing around with this title, but it really is how to control your mindset, emotions, and take action. Would that be helpful right now if we all could learn a little bit more control and, uh, you know, figure out what we're doing and why we're doing it, why we're not doing it, why I'm watching TV. By the way, that can be okay too. Uh, you may not agree with everything I say. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So NLP, are you guys familiar with it? You've heard of it. Have they kind of gone into it a little bit? Um, so here's what's really fascinating with NLP. It's neuro-linguistic programming. And uh, I think in a sales role, we hear about it all the time when it comes to building rapport, when it comes to scripts, when it comes to, right, like the language of sales, uh, embedded commands, how to close, what works best for you. Tuesday or Wednesday at four, like you want to hire the best agent like myself, right? Like that's all kind of NLP based. You guys are familiar with it in that way. Did you know though that NLP is actually how to use the language of the mind consistently to achieve your specific and desired outcomes? So to break it down one step further, it's your neurology, which is how you process information, visual, kinesthetic, auditory, taste, smell, linguistic which is the language you're using and then programming it's actually being able to reprogram your thoughts in your mind and that sounds a little out there but i can tell you it works and it's pretty incredible because i didn't did anyone else know you could actually control that kind of cool i tried well, but if you have yeah. an easy way <laughs> uh -huh. right. yeah we, I, I, I study with matthew too um for you know about four or five years and, and have disseminated a lot of this info to a lot of these guys but not in this way so i love that you're 
actually going into the tools and the science and the practical implementation of it. Thank you. And I think that's been kind of the biggest aha for me is I've been around people for so long who know this stuff, yet none of them really, or I didn't hear it. I wasn't ready to hear it. That could be it too. I wasn't ready to hear it in this way. So I find that's what's so fascinating is, um, yeah, we'll get more into it in a second. So NLP, okay? So that's what this is based off of. So the first thing I want to go over, and I'm just moving some stuff, okay, is the NLP communication model. So this is kind of what I want to start with is how your brain processes information. The reason why I think this is so important is because when I started to understand why my brain was doing what it was doing, why I was feeling certain ways, it kind of gave me a separate like perspective that I could do something about it instead of just not understanding. So real quick. An external event happens. By the way, external events happen all day, every day. It doesn't have to be something major or traumatic. Uh, so an external event happens, which you then filter, your brain filters information. You delete, you generalize, you distort. That causes an internal representation. Your internal representation is your perspective. That's your perception. So can you see already, no two people have the exact same internal representation. You could be standing with someone in a room. Do you ever know, like you recall a story or, oh yeah, I remember that. And like you remember something completely different than somebody else where you start telling a story and you were in the same place, but you recall it differently. That's because we all have our own internal representation. Your internal representation creates a state. Your state or like your emotions. So happy, sad, anxious, um, depressed, whatever it may be, excited, nervous which creates your physiology. It actually changes your physiology, which then affects your behavior. So quick example, I had an external event happen in my life that actually caused me to distort information where my internal representation was, I'm not safe. Brett knows me enough to probably know that I was a little bit paranoid, a little bit fearful, a little bit freaked out all the time. I didn't know that it wasn't on purpose. I just distort information that no matter what's happening to me, I look at it in like a fight or flight survival mode which affects my state. My emotions are paranoid, on edge, nervous, you know, exhausting that is by the way, which affected my physiology, which affected my behavior. My behavior was, hey, let's go do this. I'm like, are you driving in a small car? So I'm not getting in it. Or are you going to this big group thing? No, I'm not comfortable going there. So it affected my entire life because of an external event that I started distorting. So again, I didn't know that. I just thought that's called normal. Shouldn't we all be a little bit on edge and, you know, like keeps my guard up. Uh, so I didn't understand that that was literally my brain processing information. Another example. Now, I don't know East Coasters, if you guys, this might sound really naive, but like driving, do you guys have road rage? Uh, right? Like, does anybody have road rage out there? We're from New Jersey. This is like, this is, we're the home of road rage. I feel okay. Like. Is, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I just keep thinking like public transportation, you don't have to drive anywhere. So anyway. Um, popular with New York, not necessarily New Jersey. Capital yeah. of road rage. Okay. It, you've been verified. Yeah, state area. Yeah. We honk. We flip the bird. Capital of road rage. That has been verified. You are not the only one who just said that. That's amazing. Okay. Perfect. External event. Somebody cuts you off which you then generalize, you could be deleting or distorting, how dare they honk, cussing, I'm sure you guys get a little aggressive, you know, whatever, which affects your internal representation of how dare they, you're labeling them, they're a uh, bleep, whatever, um, which affects your state, which is what, maybe fight mode it sounds like, not so much flight, more like, I'll show you, you wanna cut me off, I'm gonna go cut you up. Like it causes this emotional like aggression, which changes your physiology, which affects your behavior. Maybe you speed up, maybe you go chasing after them. Who knows, right? People do some crazy stuff with like getting cut off because they've literally processed it through their brain that it's like this attack. How dare you? How could you do this to me? So question for you. What if someone cut you off? That's an external event. And instead of generalizing that there's some a-hole who's coming after you and you're going to show them, what if you're like, Hey, maybe if they're late to work one more time, they're going to get fired. Or maybe they're on their way to the hospital. Like, I hope, I hope they're okay. Let me just let them go. Right. It's kind of realizing, do you see how that gives you a different calmness, a different internal representation for me? Yeah. I came from a paranoid place. I was like, please go faster than me. I just want you out of my way. I hope you get wherever you're going safely. 
good luck to you, right? Like, thank you for being away. Usually I see him like pulled over later and I do have a moment of like, well, I hope you, you know, <laughs> saw that one coming. So yeah, we have our reactions, of course, and human. Um, but do you see how the way your brain's processing information is actually controlling your behavior? It's controlling your reaction. It's controlling what you're doing. So do you guys see the connection in all of this? Now we're gonna get more into conscious, or does anyone wanna add anything to that? Can this help you with your road rage and your road rage capital of the world? <laughs> what would that look like if you didn't like get adrenaline going because someone just cut you off? Is it really that big of a deal? What's funny too, like during these times, the roads are so empty that I actually haven't heard a, a horn get honked. I feel like everybody has more of that mindset where they're accepting more of that sort of thing because we're all in this together. Yeah. And last example, because we're all realtors, right? Or in the lead gen sales space or have been at some point in time. So what if an external event happened? You knocked on a door and they slammed it in your face or you picked up the phone and they cussed you out, which you now generalize that everyone's going to cuss you out. Everyone's going to slam a door in your face, which affects your internal representation of they don't want to be bothered. Nobody wants me to call them, which affects your state of, I hate calling, I'm not doing that, this isn't for me, which affects your physiology, which affects your behavior. I'm not picking up the phone. Door knocking, oh no, I wouldn't do that. Calling, ew, no, I don't cold call. I would never do that. That is generalizing. Uh, so I'm trying to read the chat and I'm gonna see if I might wait to do that later. <laughs> uh, but do you see how just an external event, someone hung up on you? Does that mean everyone's gonna hang up on you and cuss you out? Does that mean everybody doesn't want you calling or there's still out people out there who need our help? So again, just take a step back and next time you're going through the cycle, I'm gonna give you more tools in a moment, but just take a look at this and be like, hold on a second, how is my brain filtering this? Is that true? So, all That's right, awesome. how does this apply to your mindset, emotions, and taking action? Can you see how your brain is processing information has everything to do with this? Any questions this far? Keep going. I think for time, I'm going to keep plowing through. <laughs> All right. So are you guys aware you have a conscious and an unconscious or subconscious mind? This is the piece that ties it all together. Consciously, you have goals, desires, methods. The things that come out of your mouth, I'm going to do X amount of deals this year. I'm going to make X amount of money. Those are conscious intentions. However, unconsciously, subconsciously is your self-talk your attitude, your self-esteem, your worldview, your values. So what I want you guys to know is we talk about mindset all the time. I'm sure Brett and David talk about it all the time. But did you know that there's actually an external and an internal mindset? So what I mean by that is externally, you might come off really positive. You might come off like, you know what, we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. This is a gift. We're going to you know, we're going to find the beauty in it, right? Like you're a very positive person or even, even not in a pandemic, you're a positive person. Like that's okay. You lost a deal. Great. You got it out of the way. Now you're just gonna, you know, you, you, you get what I'm saying, right? Like you're just, you're always this kind of like positive positivity. People look at you that way. What you don't realize though, is internally what's happening with your self-talk because usually that isn't positive. So on the outside, I came off as a very like positive person, which took time. I was not always that way, but internally, I didn't realize how mean I was to myself. Uh, you screwed that up again. Can't believe you did that. Uh, you're not good enough for this. If you know, your agents aren't in production, what kind of leader are you? If you, you know, you think you want to lead people, like they're not doing anything. So obviously you suck at this, right? Like, can you, do you guys know that internal chatter that's going on? all the time do you guys that hope i'm not the only one that <laughs> i see some head nods yeah and the chatter can be so loud like so loud. it's so mean i didn't i mean i'm being very honest like i didn't know i did it i even punished myself with food like i can't believe i ate that that was so stupid i knew better than that of course i feel terrible right now oh now i have a headache because i made a bad decision i didn't even know i did it i had no idea on the outside, oh, Melissa, you're so positive. You're so calm. On the inside, yep, I hear it. Yep, same, yep. I had no idea how horrible I was to myself. So how does this all tie together, right? Alignment. 
So your conscious mind is your goal setter. That is your desired behavior. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to make 20 contacts a day. I'm going to do all these things. Unconsciously, though, is actually your goal getter. So your actual behavior is coming out from your unconscious, your subconscious. Same thing. So how do you know if you're in alignment? Your actual behavior matches your desired behavior. I said I'm going to do something, and I did it. Congratulations. You're in alignment. Any questions on that? Are you guys getting it? Okay. So how do you know if you're out of alignment? Your desired behavior does not match your actual behavior. So I'm going to go to the gym at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, whenever, right? I'm going to go to the gym. Hey, how about that? And you know what? It's raining out, and I just, I'm not going to make it today, or I'm tired, I overslept, I didn't sleep well last night, it's cold. How many reasons can we come up with to not get, off, not get on the phone, not go to the gym, not eat healthy, whatever we say we're going to do with good intention? How, how easy, how many things can come up that you're like, yeah, but not today, or you know what? I have this deal falling apart, or you know, we're in a pandemic and I'm not, I'm tired and I just, I want to take a day and watch TV. Like, I don't, I don't want to do anything. Like, and by the way, that is okay. I'm not shaming that at all. So, can you see that? Here's what I want you guys to hear in this we all come from a world of accountability. We all come from a world of if I'm not doing what I say I'm doing, I got to increase the accountability to make sure I do something. What I'm gonna challenge you with is if you say you're gonna do something and you don't do it, what if you ask yourself, where are you out of alignment instead of what's wrong with me? Why am I not doing it? I just need more punishment to force me to do it. Does that make sense? So for example, I'm not getting on, I said I'm gonna get on the phone and make 20 contacts and I'm not doing it. I'm gonna give you guys some questions to actually walk yourself through this process. So instead of oh, what's wrong with me, I just need to be more disciplined. Do you know how many realtors I hear say I need to be more disciplined, I need to be more motivated? I was one of them, by the way, because I averaged 17 contacts a day, four days a week. I was a complete failure and loser because I wasn't doing 20 a day, five days a week. So I needed to be more disciplined. I needed to be more motivated. Externally, people are like, Melissa, you're one of the most disciplined people I know. You're like a machine. And to me, I was like, but it's not enough. I'm not doing enough. I said I was supposed to do more. I'm capable of more. Why am I not doing more? So instead of what's wrong with me, I need more punishment. I need more pushing, forcing. What if it's just, okay, what's out? So can I challenge you guys with that to start writing it down? You may not know the answers right away. I'll give you some, some tips on what you can do to kind of walk yourself through this process. But next time you don't do something you say you're going to do, just stop, give yourself some grace. Okay. Could I be out of alignment right now? Any questions on that? Does it make sense? Okay, I'm seeing head nods. So I think we're good. Keep makes going. Total, total sense. Yeah. Yeah, it make it makes sense. In the beginning, though, so it when people are not used to asking those sorts of questions and not used to having the awareness of uh, knowing when to ask those questions. I mean, in the beginning, how did you? How did you uh, continue to know to ask yourself that? Okay, for me, I just put it in my calendar to just randomly throughout the day ask that. How'd you get started on building that discipline of even asking yourself? I feel like it came through kind of my, we all know breakdown leads to bigger breakthrough, right? So I feel like it kind of came in my own little transformation because to me, what I took this to mean was I'm not good enough, I'm failing, um, it's not working. So that means I'm not working. I want to share something really quick that there is a difference between like fail we all hear it we're all pot we hear a lot that's the cool thing with real estate we hear a lot of this personal development better every day right fail how many times have you heard like fail faster fail your way to success the, you know the faster you fail the faster you succeed there are no there is no failure there's only feedback failure but, balls off right it's just non-stop we hear it all day long every day to me, though, I didn't feel like I was failing at something. I felt like I was failing. And I there's a difference. So I knew consciously failure is part of the process, but I didn't feel like I was failing at something. I just felt like I sucked at life and it wasn't working. And therefore, something must be wrong with me. 
I'm not good enough. Like I took it internal and I don't want it to sound like a victim way. I, I wasn't like, Oh, why is this happening to me? I can't believe, like, I didn't think of myself as a victim. I just felt like I, I'm not, um, and then you get to beat yourself up for being out of alignment. No, don't beat yourself up for being out of alignment. <laughs> it's, it's, so I guess Dave, to ask, answer your question, it was part of a process of switching the way my mind thought. And I'm going to go into that more in a second. So I will answer that deeper. Um, for me though, I just want to mention that there is a difference between like feeling like you're drowning and failing in life and feeling like you're failing at something no the next steps to consider your options yes consider your options um so does that does that help at all like i just i i was in such a dark place because i kept taking it so personally so i guess that is my answer is when i stopped taking it personally and i took a step back and i looked at the situation i realized i was actually out of alignment in my values who i was as a person what i believed in what i wanted in life Matthew Ferry is actually the one who called me out on it. He's like, Melissa, you don't even like selling real estate. If you really wanted to do 50 deals, you know how to do 50 deals. If you did wanted, if you wanted it, you would have done it already. So you don't want it. And that like really pissed me off. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Of course I want it. I got to prove I'm good enough. I got to prove I can do it. Like I, I have to, you know, be worthy to be hanging out with these friends or whatever I made up in my head. So yeah, Matthew called me out on it. Like I didn't really want it in the first place. Uh, good times. <laughs> so he has that that effect on people. He sure does. <laughs> sure does. Um, okay, so this came up at the NLP class. They put it up right before a break, and I got really excited. We were gonna like dive into it and like really dissect this when we came back. And like they never talked about it. It was gone. And I'm like no, you don't understand. This is like, what does this mean? <laughs> so anxiety. So we're going to flip a little bit to talk more about your emotions. Anxiety is a warning from the unconscious mind to focus on what you want. Now, yes, there is a world pandemic happening right now. There is an external unknown uncertainty, fear. We're quarantined. It has been a month. We don't know how long it's going to last. Like there is an external world anxiety that you may not be able to ha take much control of because let's be honest if one of us is going to like save the entire world that may not be realistic it may or may not um but what can we control internally like our own anxiety it could be not knowing when your deal is coming next not knowing when you're getting paid again um right this doesn't just have to be in the context of complete shutdown of society so what if you look at it again it's the same thing to me i guess my answer is take a step back so you can look at the whole situation so if you start feeling anxious you start freaking out and you're like okay it's a warning for my unconscious to focus on what i want it usually means you're focused on the wrong thing you're focused on the negative you're focused on the fear and you're focused on what you don't want to happen and that's the same thing when you're out of alignment you're focused on what's wrong with me why am I not doing it? You're focused on the negative, which is how we're programmed. We are human. Uh, so I'm trying to see the chat box real fast. Yeah, what can you do, right? Like what can we do every day? So I guess that would be my first step. If you're feeling highly emotional right now or at any time, you start getting anxious, you have that tightening in your chest. Um, it could be depressed, it could be sad, it could be any emotion at all. It's actually something from your subconscious coming up that might be telling you you're focusing on the wrong thing. So how do you switch that? So how do you take back control? So here's some steps to actually get you rewiring to focus on what you want instead of what you don't want. So number one, you have to ask yourself, what is causing me to feel this way? If you're avoiding the phone, if you're anxious, this applies to everything, right? Like, why do I feel like a failure? Like, what is causing me to feel this way? You've got to ask yourself some questions. Say it out loud, even if you're by yourself. It's really fascinating. Sometimes the, like the answers are within us. Our subconscious knows. So it's funny when you ask, sometimes it just comes up. Uh, so first question, what is causing me to feel this way? Next is what outcome am I avoiding? You can insert fear. What outcome am I afraid of? What outcome am I um you know afraid of avoiding insert whatever you want there 
And then we got to switch it to the positive. What do you actually want? And I'm going to give you guys some examples to go how to go through this. And then once you figure that out, what's the first step to make it happen? So this goes back to the alignment thing too. I'm not doing what I say I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. What is causing me to feel this way? So let's just use a general. Uh, I'm, I'm not picking up the phone, right? We can all relate to that one. I'm not picking up the phone. Okay, what is causing me to feel this way? Uh, you could say I don't want to get hung up on. Um, I actually am so overwhelmed with business right now that if I actually got more business, that was me for a while. If I got more business, I don't even know how I would handle it. And I know the phone worked. So to me, it was like, put the brakes on it because I can't handle it right now. So what outcome are you avoiding? This could also happen anxiety with what's happening right now. What's causing me to feel anxious? I don't know when I'm going back to work. I don't know what I'm going to do and how to pay my bills. I don't know what I'm like. I'm, I'm, it's unknown. It's scary, right? So what's causing me to feel this way? I'm freaking out. Maybe you're just freaking out. Okay. So what outcome, or maybe you're like, I don't want to get sick. Um, so what outcome am I avoiding? The unknown, uncertainty your health, um, right? Like, do you see how you can just apply this to all these different scenarios? So here's where you have to start practicing switching your focus. So what do I really want? Well, I want more business so that I can feel financially stable so that I can pay my bills. I want to be healthy so that if I were to get sick, it wouldn't affect me that badly. Uh, what do you want? Maybe I don't want, well, let's see, I went negative again. I want other people to sell real estate for me on my behalf, but I can then lead them and have systems in place and run a real business. Um, what do I want? I want to, I want to, you know, lose weight or again, that is negative. So I want to be healthier. Okay. So what's the first step to make it happen? We all know the answer. If your goal is to become healthier, what's one small baby step you could do to make it happen? Eat more vegetables, walk, right? Do something for your health. It doesn't have to be go to the gym five days a week, five in the morning. I didn't say that. I just said, what's the first step to make it happen? Uh, you want more business. Okay. What's the first step to make that happen? For me, it was, I want systems in place. Okay. What system do you want to put in place first? And I was like, oh, I do know the answer for that. <laughs> what do I want? I want, I want a coach. And then I go right back to the negative, but, but I'm, I'm not qualified. I haven't done enough deals yet. No one's going to take me seriously. I'm not credible enough. Right. Let me ask you this, Melissa, what do you do or what, what's an exercise? I don't know if you know this, but I think a lot of us on this call, a lot of the top agents just in general or top, top salespeople, they have it in them where there is no one step. It's like, if I'm going to the gym, I'm entering a bodybuilding contest in 90 days. Um, or like, if I'm, you know, like if, if I'm going to go start running, I better be under a six minute mile. And like, how do you, how do you do it as like, cause Matt, Matt Plummer that was on our call, he was like, first I quit smoking. Then a month later I stopped drinking. Then I'm like, he's, he does, he's, I'm not good at anything in moderation. I'm I would say what is literally like literally what is the first step? Cool. You want to enter a bodybuilding competition? What would be the first step to make that happen? Signing up. You know, if you're going to the other extreme, I would, I would encourage you to soul search a little bit. Why do you need to go to that extreme? Is it coming from, and this is Matthew again, is this coming from a place of guilt, obligation, proving something, proving your self-worth? By the way, we tie our self-worth to our achievements. That's not healthy. <laughs> So I would say, what is the, what is the, um, so the questions I would ask is for what, in, what's the intention and for what purpose? Those are two NLP questions. What's the intention and for what purpose? Perfect. Because if it is like, I got to get healthy, so I'm going to go all out and I'm going to just get a bodybuilding. Okay. For what intention? What's the purpose? Well, and then if you start finding yourself that you're like, well, it's to prove that I can do it. And I want to show that like, I'm going to, you know, be number one, like, Okay, how does that serve you? What's that gonna do for your life? And another question that really started to change things for me and my perception, my perspective is like, how do I wanna be remembered, right? Have you ever done the, the exercise where it's like write your eulogy, like write, like write what you want people to say about you at your funeral? And then like, why would you wait to hope people say that about you? Start being that person and start living it now. 
because I can tell you right now, I was running around like a crazy person. I was stressed. I was, I got to do more. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for you. I got to hit my numbers. I got to go, go, go. I got to do more. I got to work weekends. It's the first, I got a prospect expires, even though it's a Sunday, even though it's New Year's day, whatever. Like we got in that like rat race machine. Like we're stuck on this hamster wheel. I got to do more. I got to do more. For me, I like started to just kind of wake up and realize like, for what? Everyone came up to me, Melissa, I know you're so busy. I know you don't have time. I know you're so busy. And I was like, but I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not that busy. But that was the perception I was giving off to everyone is that I don't have time for you. I'm busy. I, you know, like I have, you know, you're not important to me. And so I started thinking like the opposite way, like, okay, how do I want to be remembered? I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference. I want to inspire people to be able to get through this negative thinking and go live the life they really want. Is, is that how I'm showing up? If everyone thinks I'm busy running around out of time for them, like that's not a good look. So those questions started unraveling like, okay, how do I want to show up? What schedule do I want? How do I not work 24 seven? That's not healthy and I don't want that anyway. So does that help or answer it? Yeah, totally. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up because I know a lot of people are that, that way. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I teach another class on kind of values and are you setting goals, um, you know, based on negative, like proving, I got to prove this. I got to show you trip on your shoulder. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You just have to be really clear why you're doing things. Um, for me, I had to prove I was good enough. I had to prove I was worthy. I had to prove that I could achieve something. But that's because of past experiences that made me feel otherwise. Like everything we're trying to prove is overcoming whatever hardships we have in our life. So I think when you just kind of get at peace with who you are, why you are the way you are, how you show up, it kind of just gives you this freedom of, um, and it's interesting because Matthew started, you know, like Melissa, if you had nothing to prove, would you really care about this big team? Would you care about 50 deals or 100 deals? Would you care? And I'm like, yeah, I would still care. And then I kind of went further in my journey and I was like, oh my God, I don't care. So like, I just want to go live in the middle of nowhere and not talk to anyone. Like I lost my like identity of achiever approve. I was like, I don't want to do anything. By the you way, know that's kind of run out. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, uh, I went through the same experience with Matt and Kristen like several times. And the thing that we noticed was that um, that works really well in the beginning for almost all of us, that recognition and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and just wanting it to have it. And uh, it really does work up until like a certain point. And then all of a sudden um, it's not, it's not as fulfilling and uh, you find yourself where, where you are. So I, I think it's great that you brought that up because everybody, I think at some point is going to notice that they're there. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because we tie our self-worth to our achievements, which means the more we achieve, the better we are as a person, the better we feel about ourselves. If we don't achieve it, the worse we feel about ourselves. And then at the same time, if you stop trying to achieve things to prove something, now you're like, well, who am I? Like, what do I even want? I don't know. So I think a lot of this journey and where I get really like with my coaching, that's why I'm so passionate about this. It's helping you find clarity about what you really want. Because when you're coming from that place, you're in alignment. I'm all about alignment. If you're in alignment with your values, who you are, what you want to be remembered for, who you want to become, your goals start changing, your actions start changing, your intentions start changing. And I don't want to put it like you have to know your why and your purpose. Like I hate when people are like, if, if you're not getting out of bed every day and like your why is just not big enough, like, thanks. That's awesome, right? Like there's so many things out there that just make us feel like crap, or I at least took it to make me feel like crap. Uh, and so I think that was part of that transformation is I started rewiring my brain to focus on what I want, and I didn't even know what that was. So figuring that out was part of the process because I had this huge vision and these big goals, and I wanted to be this you know big person up on stage. But when I changed the intention, changed the purpose, figured out what I actually wanted, not to be the number one real estate agent. That is so not what I want. 
So why am I pretending? Why am I trying? Why am I forcing it? Right? Uh, so when I started just getting deeper on like, what do I actually, I honestly think it was the eulogy exercise. What do I want to be remembered for? How do, what do I want people saying about me? And then what do I need to do in my life to start showing up that way? So it, it changed the context because it wasn't about being number one anymore, or I got to hit a certain amount of deals this year. Like, do you, do I want people being like, I remember Melissa for being such a great real estate agent. She sold so many houses. Maybe some of you do, and that's okay. But like for me, I was like, ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm no. I'm laughing too because I remember even like I was doing the Miracle Morning when I was with coaching with Matthew, and I'm like, I got to get up before thirty, and blah, blah blah. And he goes, Guess what? I'm doing the opposite. I'm not going to set an alarm clock for a whole year, and when I'm done <laughs> sleeping is when I'm going to wake up. And I'm like, But you can't do that. And he's like, That's Why? you. Why? And I was just like, huh. You know, I thought that was like the funniest thing. He was like waking up at 11 in the afternoon. Yeah. How about do that? Lower the bar. That was my favorite. Lower the bar. You got to make 20 contacts today. What if you just made one? And I was like, like you want to fight it. But by the way, here's another good one. Uh, whose rules are you following? And who made them up? Successful people? Okay. Does everyone who's successful wake up at 4.30 in the morning? Well, every book I read says that you better wake up at four. Okay, so if I don't wake up at 4.30 in the morning, I'm not going to be successful. To me, I'm like a rule breaker. I'm like, I'll show you, right? What do they say with expireds? Get on at 7.38 in the morning. By the way, I felt horrible about myself, but really, I never called expireds until 9, 9.30, 10. That was my entire business was expired, but I wasn't calling first. Like, do you see how we just, we make up all this crap and then we listen to it. And it's like, who, who made it up in the first place? Do people not answer the phone in the afternoon? It was like, Matthew that did make it up in the first place and his dad. <laughs> well, that's another story. I, I joke all the time that Matthew's like the AA of, uh, you know, Mike Berry. <laughs> so, that's that's like, a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love I love them all and I'm and by the way, I am so grateful. Like I would not be the salesperson I am today or have the knowledge I have today if it were not for Mike Ferry and Matthew and all these people. So I think that the the difference Same. is like we don't all fit in a box. You gotta find what works for you and that's okay. But like there isn't one answer. So okay, I just realized the time. Keep going. <laughs> All right, so it's all about action. What's stopping you? So can we agree that if you are not doing what you say you're gonna do, there could be something out of alignment. It may not be what you really want in the first place. You gotta dig a little bit deeper, ask what the intention is, what the purpose, ask those questions. Because you are capable of achieving anything you truly want. You've already proven it. Anything you really want in your life, you made it happen. And you were excited about it, and you were inspired about it, and you just did it. So, Focus on what you do want, not what you don't. That's step one. If you don't know, I've, I literally taught this many times now and I had someone who was like, I just want to, like, I don't even know what happiness feels like anymore. Like, I just want to feel happy again. And it was like, okay, let's dig deeper in this. What does happy mean to you? Like, we got to really figure out what do you want? What do you want? Most of us don't know and that's okay. That's part of this process. You get what you're looking for. I heard it all the time. You know, what you Matthew says it to you, what you resist will persist, right? So if you're frustrated, anxious, you're going to get more of it. But I, like, I never, no one ever, I felt like I didn't know how to actually stop it. Like, I knew all these things, but I didn't know how to do anything about it. Uh, yeah, not every, I thank you. So something from all these motivational speakers, not everything is good for all. You got to figure out what works for you and what feels right for you. Uh, so you get what you're looking for. So be careful what you're looking for. Have you ever wanted something in your life and made it happen? I guarantee you big or small, every single person on this call can say yes. So what do you, here's another way for like your values. What do you naturally spend your time, energy, and money on? Like that is a huge clue of what is important to you in your life. And a really good example of this is if you add, if you call me and try to sell me um, leads, I'd be like, that's so expensive. That's ridiculous. I would never spend any money on that. No, thank you. Not interested. Hang up on you. But if you're like, hey, Melissa, there's a seminar coming up. It's $1,000. It's about mindset. I'd be like, oh, sign me up. Let's go. 
oh, it's, it's 5,000 for my master prac, you know, NLP certificate. Like, well, yeah, that would be amazing. I'd love to learn all those things. Right. But if it's like 500 a month for leads, I'm like, I don't have money for that. <laughs> so start paying attention. I started realizing all my time and energy was spent on personal development and growing and learning and um, nature. I want to be outside. So yeah, pay attention. What do you, do you spend all your money on fine dining and food? I'll tell you, I can't afford it. We eat like we go out for ramen. We think like that's amazing, right? That's not important to us. So start paying attention. That gives you a really big uh, key into what your values are. And as I said, pay attention to your values. So really good, ex quick example of this is, and I know we're already running out of time. Uh, so with real estate, for me, freedom and like financial stability is like freedom is like my number one value. So anytime I feel like I'm saying yes to somebody else's schedule, it violates my free, my value of freedom. So a buyer, I need to see this house on Saturday at this time. And if you don't do it, I'm finding another agent. And I would be like, oh, but I need the business. It's one Saturday. Okay. Like I was now violating who I was as a person, what I believed in. And it made me malfunction. It made me miserable. I was resentful. I didn't like it. Uh, that's one quick example. Hope it makes sense. Okay. So requisites for empowerment and change. So basically, how do you actually make a difference in changing your life? Number one, you have to release negative emotions and limiting beliefs. So Brett, this goes back to like, why do I go so extreme or, you know, go all in? You've got to release the negative behind it. Number two, you have to create a compelling future. Number three, take action. All this mindset stuff and manifesting, it doesn't mean you like sit back and just dream it and it happens. You still have to take action. You just have to take the right action. And then you have to focus on what you want. So if you're unsuccessful, like things aren't changing, you're doing more, but you're not seeing more results, it's either in the wrong order, you're focused on the wrong thing. So perfect example, it's a shift right now, we gotta double down, double your lead gen efforts. Okay, but if we didn't release negative emotion or limiting belief around it, if we didn't create a compelling future and we're not focused on what you actually want, you're just taking action, it's not gonna work because you're taking action on the wrong thing. Like why, do, why is the answer always do more? Like, why can't it be do less? I want to do more with less. That's my goal. Work smarter, not harder. Hmm. All right. I'm going to plow, go through these really fast. So life is happening for you, not to you. This kind of brings it all together because Dave, I think, asked me in the beginning, like, what was it that I started shifting? I feel like I literally started taking a physical step back, looking at what was happening in, in front of me. And I, I, I had a huge aha, like it was happening for me to prepare me for where I am today. It wasn't happening to me where I had to, I'm not good enough. I have to prove it. I, I have to do more so that I can have this someday. I'll have what I want when I prove I can do this. None of that was true. So I think if you can just take a step back and look and see what's the lesson here. My lesson was, oh my gosh. I'm out of alignment with my values and this isn't fulfilling my purpose and who I want to be and what I want to do. Selling real estate was not fulfilling for me. It actually made me miserable because I felt like it was keeping me from what I really wanted, which was to coach and teach and make an impact, make a difference. So that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with selling real estate. So I looked at it differently. How could I set up my real estate business so it empowers me, it excites me, and it's in alignment with my values of leadership, freedom, growth, impact, alignment, money too, let's be real, that is a core value, right? So for, for me, I started to restructure everything differently because I was focusing on what I actually wanted, not what I didn't want. So I do love leadership. I want to be a leader of my team. I love pouring into my people. I love that piece of it. If it's Melissa, the real estate agent who has to go out and buy and sell, help buyers and sellers, no thank you. So once I could just differentiate it, it was like, oh, I don't have to close up shop and like walk away from a business of 11 years. It still brings in money. I can just restructure it differently to make it work for me. So that would be my suggestion for you guys. If something you feel like is just not working, take a step back, reevaluate. You might be in the wrong role. It may not be fulfilling your values. It may, it may be conflicting with your inner belief system. Not that you're failing, it's just not the, it's not fulfilling you. So does that make sense? 
Okay, so how do you, so recap, how do you control your mindset, emotions, and take action? Pause, breathe, reflect. You have to embrace it. You have to acknowledge it. You have to feel it. Uh, like, you can't just shut it down and be like, it's okay, we'll get through it. I know, like, it hit, and it's going to hit you in waves. You might, by the way, have a day where you're like, I'm, like, really sad with what's happening in the world, and I just feel it. Feel it. Don't try to shut it down and then go make 30 calls. Like, you have to embrace it. Identify where you're out of alignment or what you're focusing on that you don't want. Focus, and then you got to switch it. Focus on what you want instead because you do know the answer. You do know the first step. Wait, Melissa. Yeah. Um, can we back up a second? Yes. And by the I way, I really want important. to be respectful of your guys' time. I know we have like two minutes, but I can stay on to finish it out if anybody wants to. Oh, that's awesome. We definitely do. And we, okay. we, we have a lot of times if the, if the guests can, we do. Um, what you just said was really important. So, and, and, you know, we got this from Matthew is like, um, is ride the wave. So if you're feeling a certain way, don't yeah. beat yourself up about it and try to force your way out of it. You know, if you're feeling that way, just be okay with it. You know, be aware with it, accept it, be okay with it. And then just make that kind of how you're going to operate that day. Maybe you're not going to run five miles, but you're going to do 20 minutes on the elliptical, like while watching TV or something, you know, like, to, and, and then allow yourself to, to do that so that you can now move forward powerfully out of that the next day. Yes. What if, what if you took a mental day off? Like, is that really such a horrible thing? If you were like, you know what, today is going to be a mental day. I just need it. Your body is telling you to slow down and take a break. And I really, really believe that our bodies are giving us warning signs and telling us things all the time. We just don't listen and push through it and got to push and not, you know, feel the pain anyway and push through it, right? Like it's, it's fascinating to me because if you don't slow down or you don't take care of yourself, unfortunately, something will happen that will force you to. So would you rather learn that lesson the hard way or would you rather start slowing down and being like, you know what, I, I've been on my computer too much. I've been on more Zoom calls than I can even count. My eyes hurt by the weekend. I was like, my head hurts. <laughs> like get off your computer. Day is flowing into night right now. Weekend, weekday, it's 24 seven of the same thing every day. We're home. So another thing I've been telling all my, my people is create a new schedule. Who says you can't do dishes at 12 o'clock or take a nap or go take a really cool online, by the way, there's all these really cool online virtual classes happening. Dance, yoga, meditation. Like I took a dance class with 5,000 people around the world over the weekend. It was amazing. Like, and it's at, you know, 10 o'clock this morning or tomorrow. There's ballet. Like I come from a dance background, so that's what I'm attracted to. But like, what if you're going so hard right now, you're not even taking advantage of the really special, amazing communities that are being created out there? Like, that would be so sad if you come out of quarantine and you're like, oh, there was that dance thing, or oh, there was that. Oh, I didn't have time for that. I was busy. That's sad. I think that's sad. So I would encourage you all to like, no offense, hope you're okay with this. Take a day and like do something fun. It could be an hour. Who says we worked eight hour days anyway? Like it's real estate. When did we ever work like a full eight hour clock in clock out? That's not real either. <laughs> Some people are saying yes, but it's rare. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm a lunatic, Melissa. So, you know, I... You know, some of us are wired more machine and some of us are more creative and like, don't put me in a box. You just gotta this, like know how you operate better and yeah. like, do what works for you. This this work is fun for me though, so I don't know. I think that's cheating because <laughs> I I have also a ball. Means you're in alignment with your values. Yeah. Because when you're you. in alignment with your values, you're inspired to take action. I don't need accountability. Like I do no. not need accountability. I do need some. I have blind spots. I do need someone to point out where I have a blind spot or where I'm still holding back. Of course. But once I'm clear about what I really want, I go make it happen. Yeah. And everyone the, is fully capable of that. The Rose always like, and your numbers say cool. Can you put your numbers in? How about you put your numbers in? So I would How just ask you more questions. What's subconsciously <laughs> holding you back from putting your numbers in? <laughs> I, I, it, nothing. I just, I just bought Sisu. So I didn't have to do it myself anymore. <laughs>
<laughs> you see how fun this can be? Like, like, no, really, you're resisting something subconsciously. So let's figure out what it is. I believe once you figure it out, you clear it up and you can do something about it. My, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. All right. So what happens next? What does your mindset, emotion, action plan look like now that you understand how your brain works and filters information? To me, that was empowering. I could take back control and be like, oh, I'm programmed to go to the negative. I'm a human. I'm built for fight or flight survival mode. No wonder why I've been acting this way. Uh, it, to me, it was just a huge aha. What inspires you to take action? If it's not inspiring you to do it, you're not clear, something's holding you back. I can usually ask a couple questions, Brett and Dave, I'm sure they can ask you a couple questions and figure out what is subconsciously stopping you. Do you now have clarity on what to do when you feel anxious, you're feeling stuck, or you're on the negative? Like, I wanna make sure you guys understand those questions that can literally pattern interrupt you and take you from the negative to focus back on what you want. Does everyone feel like they're clear on that? You have tools now. By the way, something David said too, I thought being this like enlightened person on this spiritual journey and accepting things for what it is, I, I thought that actually meant I wouldn't like feel like emotions to the same degree. Um, and I thought that like, I wasn't supposed to feel anxious. I wasn't supposed to feel sad or anger. And my coach, I hired the NLP trainer to be my coach now, by the way, which has been amazing. And she's like, Melissa, you're human. You absolutely have to feel your emotions and embrace them and acknowledge them. She's like, but now you also have tools so you don't let them control you. And I was like, oh, that's deep. Okay. I'm allowed to feel. You guys are allowed to feel. You have to feel. Brene Brown said, if you don't name your emotions and feel them, they will eat you alive. So don't suppress. Don't push down. That actually manifests as ailments in your body. I'm doing a whole thing on that now, how like headaches right? Stress, tension, like that's, that's suppressed emotion or feelings or acknowledgement that you're just like shoving somewhere and it's coming out as sickness. I think that's a whole other thing, but that's proven. Uh, it's pretty nuts. Are you aware of what's getting in your way? And if you're not, you now have some questions to start asking yourself, journal, write it out. So I want everyone to write down or think about one action item you'll take immediately to move you forward to go after what you want. It might be a mental health day. It might be, uh, what is this NLP stuff? And I want to learn more about it. It might be, I don't know what I want and I want to figure that out. Uh, how do you want to be remembered? We, I dump a lot at you and I'm realizing I need to be more like responsible with it because this is kind of opening up your mind to something totally different. You've got to process it. So take a moment, sit with it, write something out. And to wrap things up, so if you're interested, uh, I do what I call an hour alignment session. It's really to help you get clarity, get clear where you stuck. Uh, it's usually 250 because of my relationship with Brett and Dave. Like I want to offer it to you guys to 150. It's an hour. If you're interested, please reach out. Here's my information. And honestly, you don't need the one hour session if you don't have to deep dive on something. Follow me on Instagram. I put a ton of mindset videos there. I have a Friday night chat. It's all about this type of stuff. And then I did just start a YouTube channel where I'm, I want to post more content. So if you are interested, I'd love, um, you can do that too. And you will still get something out of it. And if you want something more, then you can have the hour uh, session as well. That's so awesome. And yeah. So I'd love to hear um, some ahas, takeaways, questions. You guys have a couple minutes and then I'm going to put this up, like stay in touch. So if you need my info, it's here. Um, I can stop screen sharing in a second too, but I'd love to hear some. <laughs> Melissa, I just want to say thank you so much um, because like not only for doing this, but the way you brought this material across, um, I think was perfect for, for this group. Uh, sometimes, you know, even similar content, uh, doesn't come across in, in a way that's going to resonate. And at least my experience today uh, was, was awesome. So thank you. That's so cool. Cause guys, this is new for me. Like this was like November, right? From the time I figured out I wanted to coach to like figure out the steps to make it happen and get out of my own self doubt and limiting beliefs. It was 30 days from the time I said, I want to coach. I do know what to do to having my first paid client it was 30 days. 
I spent years talking about how I couldn't do it. I didn't know what I was doing. No one would hire me. Well, you know, like victim. <laughs> so thank you. Because to me, like that's honestly the best gift I can have is you guys commenting, sharing who else could hear this. Cause I'm on this mission right now to just get the word out. Like it's, it's not even about the one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's literally, I want as many people to hear this because I know we're all experiencing it, right? So thank you. And I'm glad it, it resonated. Thank and you. <laughs> it's funny too, because it's so appropriate for like everything that you just went over is so appropriate for what we're going through right now. Yeah. But you and I set this up before there was a pandemic. Yep. <laughs> like it, this, this just happens to tie into that, but guess what? It happens to tie into your life when things are going quite well too. Oh, yeah. um, so, so if anything, it, 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 it might even be more relevant then because you're just going through the motions too much. That's when you don't have time to take the dance class. That's when, you know, you, you, you're not pausing to, to worry about yourself. So this I think it's so awesome. This class needs to be in person only, right? I never yeah. thought of a webinar or streaming it or that to me was like so far off and, oh, I'm not there yet. I got to really master what the hell I'm even saying before I like start pursuing that. And then this quarantine happened. Like this is the same class. I didn't really change that much for, it's crazy. But to me, that means I'm in alignment. I'm onto something and it's happening really fast. So I'm like, okay, totally. figuring this out, right? It's like It's funny too, because it's with everything. Like my, my son's um, piano lessons, those are still happening. His MMA lessons are still happening. His school is still happening, even though they canceled it for the rest of the year. Um, it's just happening in a different way that is actually better for this, you know, for the, this time. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Here, I'll stop sharing my, uh, there you go. Yeah. I'm just, thank you guys. And for allowing me to go a little bit over too. that's, that's where like the more I can just get the word out, the better, if it helped you in any way, seriously, keep in touch. Let me know. I still have people coming back. I started this in October, November teaching and people still come back and they're like that class, man, I didn't even realize, um, where I was out of alignment or what was happening for me. So it's, thank you. I'm using my, thank you. See, like this is, this is so cool. <laughs> so thank you That's guys, awesome. honestly.